Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to the Actors Area. Area. I'm your host, Sean Robert Grant, a.k.a. Reverend Sean Robert Grant, known to some of these in these parts here. And welcome to the Actors Area once again. Happy to be here with you. Happy to share this platform and thank you in advance for all of the support coming in. You guys are amazing. I appreciate you. You know, somebody mentioned one time that, oh, it's so hard to sit through the ads before I listen to your podcast. I'm like, well, you gotta, gotta make revenue somehow or another. So with that being said, thank you in advance (laughs) to each and every one of you that sit through those ads and still listen to, um, to the podcast, to this podcast. So I uh, hope this message finds you feeling your absolute best, guys. We're going to get into it here in just a minute. Um, if you have any questions, any comments, any feedback you want to shoot on over to me, send me an email at shaung04 at gmail.com. And if you know you, if you know me personally, then you know you can send me a text or a Facebook message, Instagram, whatever it is. Um, hell, we're all accessible nowadays <laughs> in a lot of different ways, so... You, you, I'm sure you can get in contact with me if you really wanted to, um, just to let you know that you guys that have been chiming in, it's been absolutely great and terrific to really, uh, hear your thoughts. And, you know, for me, it's about sharing, it's about uplifting, it's about empowering, it's about using my experience to help, help humanity, help all of humanity. And honestly, just glorify God with the blessings and the talent and the gifts that I've been, that have been bestowed upon me. So, um, yeah, want to, want to let you guys know, thank you so much for that. And, uh, let's get into today's topic. All right. So we, we've been doing this actors, actor stories that motivate us. And this is part four. Oh, and I want to say one more thing because like I said, I've been having issues with this. So I'm going to call them out and they seem to have fixed it the last couple of times, but you know what? I'm not going to take my foot off the gas under any impression. I promise we'll get started after I do this, but I got to say this, uh, Spreaker, I don't know. I think it's AI that says it has been detecting music within my podcast. And so they will basically take the podcast down on all of the platforms. Um, it's faulty and I don't know why it happened, but it's happened. So I'm letting you know, right off the bat, if by some chance this podcast is removed from the outlet that you're listening to it on, please go to my YouTube channel, S Grant 28, or just Sean Grant, S-H-A-U-N-G-R-A-N-T. And you can find the episode there because YouTube does not take it down. It will always be up on YouTube no matter what. So hopefully that does not happen. But in the event it does happen, you're prepared and you're ready to rock over on the YouTube channel to listen to the great wisdom we're sharing today. All right. And so as I promised, let's get into it. So actor stories that motivate us. This is part four. And um, today's story is, 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 I mean, they're all fun, but they all have different messages. And uh, <laughs> for the sake of identity, all names either will be changed or just won't be revealed because, you know, this is more or less, this is more about a teaching opportunity, not so much about calling somebody out, but at the same time, when you're wrong, you're wrong. And the idea is you get it right the next time, you know, and that's what counts. And so I'm a firm believer in that, but uh, let's get into it. Right. So I was at a point in time in my career where I had done really well and I was just eager I think I was I was all for a bit and the the thing that I love so, so much about my experience as an actor is that I've never just worked myself into the ground to the point where I would have like mental issues, emotional issues and like I just couldn't function. I've never done that at any point in time. It's just never been that way and I'm so grateful for that balance because I just heard Taraji P Henson the other day talk about how you know, she worked herself right into mental health issues because she was just going back to back to back to back. And you just can't do that. Um, it just, it, it, you know, you're, you get so far out of balance 
it just it takes you out. So I can remember, you know, it was one of those times and I felt like I had been off for an extended period of time. And so I was ready to get back in. And so, you know, I, I, I kind of fell back into the whole submission thing where you go to backstage, you go to these Facebook groups, you know, you kind of chime in to see what's happening um, there with those things, those outlets and stuff like that, casting networks. I was doing all that stuff. It Funny enough, it's like I was backtracking um, a lot of the things that I used to do. And so I went in and I, I found this message and there was a film. And, and so I'm going to give you right off the bat, this whole thing of working free is kind of a slippery slope. And this is kind of what the lesson tells me. This is what it, it teaches me um, as it relates to, you know, when you should work for free, if you should work for free when you should not work for free. There's a few things to really cover, but I'll get to that here in just a bit. I just want to get into the story. And uh, so anyway, I find this Facebook group and I see this film and it looks, it looks pretty decent. Right. And so, you know, I learned sometimes what can happen is you can get fooled by a write up in the sense that someone can make a write up look very, very professional. Right. But for whatever reason, I'm a firm believer in frequency and consciousness. I was drawn to it and being drawn to it. You know, I actually submitted and, you know, sent over my credentials and stuff like that. My newly devised commercial reel and uh, film reel, which is fantastic. Uh, (laughs) And uh, I sent it over. And before you know it, I think a day later, the guy responded to me. And so, you know, seemed like a nice enough guy. And, and, you know, I felt a good vibe about it. And, and, you know, he's like, well, I, um, I feel like I'm going to offer you the, the position of, of SWAT. And I was like, oh, okay, that's awesome. Cause you know, I've been watching a lot of SWAT and I've been studying up on that. And I just really, I really love the military, you know, law enforcement roles. I've just resonated with that for some reason throughout my career, but I just love that. So I was just, I was super excited about it. And, you know, we, we chatted over email and then he, um, he gave me the date where we would have a, a table read. And so here's, here's what I want to tell you. <laughs> Not to sound like a snob, but when you're starting out and you're really trying to build credits and at this point, look, I, I'm going to tell you, I'll be honest with you. I've had, I had more than like more than 50 something credits, probably even more when you think about commercials and industrials, independence, all that stuff. I had so many different credits, but I was so eager to get back on to a film set to just express myself in that creative outlet that I was willing to just pretty much do anything. And what that told me in hindsight was that I was impatient instead of doing like I had done and allowing things to unfold in a divine way and come to me, you know, through universal intelligence, I decided I was going to jump the gun. And so I jumped the gun and here's what happened. So I, uh, I clear my schedule out to make time to do this digital table read. And so I get there and you know, everything is, is, it seems legit. And we start rolling along and um, I'll never forget the thing that was most startling to me was one guy was basically driving while on the, (laughs) was on the table read, right? And he was driving and I was just like, wait, what? He's like, no, 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 I got this. I got this. I'm like, wait, just hold on. No. And sure enough, he was, he was attempting to read his lines while he was driving. So immediately. And like I said, you know, you gotta be really, it's a slippery slope, right? But you have to be mindful of when you judge. But at the same time, if someone is driving while doing a digital table read, that's one red flag that pops up, right? So 
I'm like, okay, you know what? Like, I'm not one to focus outside of myself. So I'm just going to focus on me and we're going to go from there. And so we get rolling and, uh, and, and mind you, this is this, I knowingly understood that this was a free pro bono job. And I, and I, I knew that. And you know what? I, the, the beauty of it is I was, I was and still am in a, a really strong, um, prosperous financial position. So it wasn't a case of me needing something from this individual, but it was a, a freebie, so to speak. And I've always had issues in the past with freebies, but I said, you know what, I'm going to turn over a new leaf. And so, all right. The the pod the podcast the digital table read continues, and you know I'm just I'm I'm a I'm a people observer, especially when you're on set because you always want to know who's who, right? And 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 how does one carry themselves, and how does one interact with other people? And I just noticed that there's one guy who just is like. You know, he must have thought he was the the second coming of Denzel or something like that. And and I, he just spoke that way. And, you know, not to be petty, but I'm like, you know, I want to look up this guy to see like who he, you know, who he is, because he's really flexing, so to speak, in a very egotistical capacity. And so I was like, I got to know who this guy is and come to find out he had like two credits. <laughs> and so. You know, I'm at that place. I'm like, you know, I'm not one to judge, not one to judge. And then the the guy who was actually emailing me, who was actually the producer of the film, he starts and he says, OK, here's the deal, guys. We're nine people short of what we need in order to uh, to do this film. I'm like, oh, nine people. I was like, we're, we're shooting pretty quickly. But I was like, OK. He's like, if you know anybody that wants to be a part of this film, that would be awesome. I'm like, okay, yeah, you know what? Fair enough. He hadn't had a chance to cast everything just yet. Um, and then he says, uh, he says, so in a moment, we're going to break down the script and then we're going to go to everybody's responsibilities and what they need to do. And I think to myself, I'm like, responsibilities, like in my responsibility to show up and be the best that I can and act and, you know, receive a credit and, and get some film afterwards is what I'm thinking to myself and come to find out that wasn't it. <laughs> that wasn't just it. So once again, I tell you guys be very mindful of going into a pro bono, a freebie situation and understand all of the terms. Okay. Understand every term that is being laid out in front of you because I'm going to tell you and be honest with you because that's the only way I learn. That's the only way you guys can learn. I was completely unaware of my own fault of the terms that were on the table and that threw me for the biggest loop. I, I just, I just, I can't even begin to tell you. So anyway, they start to continue the guys reading the script from like literally driving um, in his car at the same time, the other guy is basically telling everybody else what to do, um, without really any type of acting background whatsoever. And we get to the scene where my character comes in and it's just titled SWAT. Right. And so I start reading and then all of a sudden another guy on the, th- another <laughs> guy on the, the table read starts reading the same line. And I was like, Oh my bad. I was like, um, like it just, I, I, I thought this was me. He said, Oh, that's you. Oh, cause I thought it was me. Right. And we're like confused as hell. And the guy, you know, who had been, been corresponding with, he tells me, he says, Oh, Oh, so you know what we're going to do? We're actually going to improv and we're going to add lines on the day of, Right. When you guys, you know, when you guys show up and stuff. So we won't even really worry about that right now. And I'm like, wait, 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 what? Like, (laughs) like why? And so I thought to myself, and this is all of my years of experience, like really starting to question 
how could I be in a position that I'm in right now at that time, at that moment in time, I really asked myself, what the F am I doing? Like how, like, but then I asked like, why I get improv, but why put two characters into one and then not clarify with them who was who? And this just created such the biggest confusion. And I'm just like, yo, man, this is like, this is kind of whack, right? <laughs> this is like really jacked up. So I, I, I keep my cool about it because like, I'm at the end of the day, I'm a professional and um, everybody keeps telling me that I'm, I'm just a professional. I'm just a professional <laughs> man on fire. But um, that's the truth. I'm just a professional. So I, I, I keep my cool about it. And, you know, we get to the end of the script. And then all of a sudden. The guy, the head guy, the guy who's basically the filmmaker begins to say, OK, so I'm going to go through what everybody needs. And then he, you know, he calls out on me and he says, OK, I need you to get this, 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 this and this. And mind you, this is equipment. This is props. This is, um, you know, all these things that I would need to do a film, whereas on other film sets, they would be provided. So I, I've never really been in a position ever free or paid film where I had to provide everything. Right. I don't mind bringing my clothes because a lot of times, you know, you bring your clothes, you can get a stipend for that. Um, And, you know, you just you look good in what you decide to wear on a regular basis. But um, so he tells me about this prop, that prop, this costume, that costume. And I'm just adding all this stuff up. And uh, I think it comes out to be like hundred and eighty, two hundred dollars. And I'm like, at first, I'm like, what? Like for free? Are you serious? Like, <laughs> and then I think about it, I brush it off. I was like, you know what? No, because maybe I can use it down the road. Right. No problem. Then after he tells me about all that stuff that I got going and this is on top of this is on top of the idea of um, not having set lines. So the thing, if you know me. And for those of you that don't, when it comes to acting, preparation is is like the number one key. I will spend sometimes up to a couple weeks breaking down lines, breaking down a backstory, reciting lines, speaking them into a voice memo, like reading, listening and saying them out loud. I will spend weeks on hand sometimes doing that to make sure that I am completely and utterly prepared when the day comes. God took that right from underneath me. So that was that internally was frustrating me a little bit. And then on top of that, I got to go spend two hundred dollars on my own gear. And then on top of that, right, I've got to drive 50 miles away from my home, 50 miles there, 50 miles back. Right. No gas stipend, no anything. And then to top it off. okay, top it off. I don't eat meat. So I'm I'm basically 90 percent vegan or 95% vegan, 5% vegetarian. And so I have food allergies or, or, or restrictions didn't ask about any of that stuff. And so I'll tell you what happened next. We get off the call and for some reason I'm just in a good mood and I still feel good about it. And so, you know, I'm planning to do this, but I'm a, I'm a big meditator. And this is why I tell you like, before you get into these types of films, these types of projects, just know what you're getting into. Like I, I, I had to learn that lesson head on, but I want to save you from it because I'm going to tell you something. There are two types of individuals in this world. There are individuals that are givers and there are individuals that are takers and there are individuals that just don't care. Right. And sometimes when you're doing a film project, you will encounter one of those three. Right. So when you get to a place where an individual is a taker, they will offer nothing. They don't even understand that it takes energy to be able to show up and to be the best that you can. All this individual can think about is what they're getting from you on film. And there's nothing reciprocating in the process. See, the reality is nothing in life is free. There always has to be a reciprocation of energy 
no matter what it is, right? And and sometimes that's like, yeah, you may not have any money, but throw a couple bucks somebody's way, you know, for gas because they're driving a certain way. But in this instance, what I discovered, I discovered an individual who was giving nothing. Now, he was like that in the beginning. I just didn't see it because I was clouded by the emotion of wanting to work, right? That emotion, that desire completely clouded my better judgment and ability to discern what was in the highest good for me and what wasn't. And so I found myself in this hole, right? In this hole of just like, what the f- am I doing? Like, what, like, what is going on? You know? And so I thought about it <clears throat> and I thought about it. And the more I came to, the more I repositioned myself to be grounded and be centered. I was like, I don't want to do this. And you know what I did? Because I didn't want to, you know, for me, and and this is another lesson. I'm just going to be straight up honest honest with you what I did. I told a story that I felt like he would accept so it wasn't any backlash coming back. Well, guess what? Didn't matter. Got all the backlash. (laughs) Got all the backlash in the world from this individual saying how much I let him down, how much I let the production down. You know, I can't do this to him at the last minute and, you know, yada, yada, yada. And I said, hold on, stop right there. I was like, okay, first of all, and I, and this is what I told him. I said, you can't get anything in life for free, right? What you're doing is taking away. You're not offering anything to any actors whatsoever. And it's kind of unprofessional. And I think you need to find a better way to go about it. And I just went down a list of things and he didn't respond. And that was that. Right. So. You know, I got off that and I'm just like, you know what, I just got to cleanse myself of this energy. And I and I took a moment. I stopped and I, and I told myself. I was like, you know what, this is why we allow things to unfold and to develop from a divine standpoint, as opposed to going to go reaching and grabbing and going after different roles that are likely in some ways not the very best for us. Right. And that was a really telltale sign for me. And then I also got into the space of, you know what, God dog it, I'm at least worth gas money, right? (laughs) I'm at least worth, you know, a a vegetarian meal. Like, you know, it really kind of helped me to figure out like with my self-esteem and my self-worth, like what am I going to put up with, right? What am I going to expect going forward when it comes to getting on a set. Now, if I decide to work for quote unquote free, because there necessarily is no free, what am I receiving in return? Like, come on, you got to It's a reciprocation. Those things that don't reciprocate evenly, even if there's no cash involved, they fail because you're, you're, you're not adhering to the number one law of the universe, which is the law of giving and receiving. It's got to be equal somehow or another. Right. And I tell this story. It's pretty funny looking back on it because I I just like shook my head when I thought about like, how did I get myself into it? But I tell this story because and the reason why it motivates me, it motivates me to never settle. It motivates me to say, you know what, if I hadn't got an acting role in three months, then God dog it. I'm not supposed to get an acting role in three months. Maybe I get one in three and a half. Maybe I get one in four. Maybe I get one in five. I've got to be patient. I can't force things to happen. See, society would have you believe that you need to force and take action and make things happen. But you know what? You step on the universe's toes when you do that and you step into things that don't serve your highest expression. This film did not serve my highest expression. As a matter of fact, it took away from my highest expression, because to look at everything I had accomplished in my life as an actor and then to turn around and do something that just brought absolutely nothing to the table was by far the most challenging 
situation that I had ever allowed myself to be in. And it wasn't anybody pushed me into it. I blatantly sought it out, kind of sort of understood what was going on. And I put myself into that quicksand. But you know what? I wasn't afraid to get myself out. Now, I wanted to be, you know, to be like a clean break, but it it didn't turn out that way. And that happens sometimes. But I tell you, I felt so much better about that to the point where it inspired me to start creating my own stuff. I'm like, you know what? If I'm going to do something for free, I'm going to do it with me. I'm going to like make sure that it serves me in a way that I can feel joy at the end of the day. And that's what I do now. If If it ever goes a time where I'm not booking or I'm not, you know, experiencing an influx of work. I will take my own camera. I will find a a set, create a set in my home or outside, whatever it is. And I will act and I will act and I will dig deep and I will act as if it was a film that that I'm being professionally paid to do. And when I tell you that brings more joy than some of these paid things that I've done, it shows me that honestly, and this is, this is what I, this is the motivation I got from it. If I'm going to work for free, I should probably work for me. Right. I know that sounds like a riddle, but it says, if I'm going to work for free, I should probably work for me. And why is that? Because I can set it up around myself to where I can be the very best that I can show up in the very best light you know, write the script that caters to me, you know, wear the clothes that cater to me, I can amplify myself, right? And that as an actor is one of the most richest experiences in the world. So the motivation in this comes from knowing you're worth more than I, I, you know, I think sometimes what happens is we just get so caught up in wanting to work and wanting to do something and wanting to be in this position where, um, we're, we're on camera and we can show people we're on camera and we're doing different things and stuff that we sometimes sell ourselves short just to be able to do that. When in actuality we can put ourselves on our iPhone and just go to town, um, But I'm not saying it has to stop at that. What I'm saying is use my story as an opportunity to be motivated to know your worth, to understand your self-esteem, to not settle for something so far less than what you are when you've put in the work to be the very best actor and performer that you can be. You deserve better, right? I deserve better than that, and that's why I broke free from it. And never be afraid to do that. Never be afraid to shoot something down if you feel like it's beneath you. Some people may try to call you ungrateful, but I'm going to tell you what. Your heart knows. Your intuition knows what's resonant and right for you and what's not. And you got to trust that. And when you trust that and when you believe in that, you're not afraid to make the decisions that serve your highest expression. And when it serves your highest expression, I guarantee you it's going to feel like the best experience ever, no matter how much money you're getting from it, no matter how much of anything you're getting from it, you're going to feel alive doing it. And that's what the whole point of being an actor, performer, creative is all about, right? You want to feel alive while you're doing stuff, not dead, not checked out, not you know, mumbling and, 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 and griming, griping and grumbling about, you know, what you're not getting. That's when, you know, okay, I got to rethink this stuff and figure out where I'm not getting it. And once you find out, once you get that clarity, then you can set yourself on the road to getting exactly what it is that you need. I promise you it's, it's, it's going to elevate you to new heights and it's going to also encourage you to be more creative on your own as an actor, as a performer. Guys, with that being said, thank you for tuning in today. That ends our message. If you have any uh, comments, questions, feedback, please write to me at shaung 4 at gmail.com. And I will get back to you as soon as I can. But um, that, like I said, wraps up today's episode. 
Thank you guys for your support. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for uh, listening and, and, and really taking to heart the things that I say and share. And uh, yeah, use it to your advantage. Like, don't stop. Go get what's yours. Success, fulfillment is all out there for you. You just got to make up your mind and do what you need to do. With that being said, happy Thursday to you. If you're in the States, wherever you are, have a wonderful night, day, evening. Take care. Bye-bye.